Welcome back. This is your world at 10. The big story tonight, of course, is Satyam and how Tech Mahindra has emerged as the highest bidder for Satyam at 58 rupees a share. Well, Anand Mahindra called it a game changing transaction for Tech Mahindra. To get more details on that game changing transaction, I have with me in an exclusive interview Falguni Nair, the managing director of Kotak Investment Bank. And Kotak Investment Bank is the lead advisor to Tech Mahindra on this transaction. Falguni, thanks very much for joining me. 58 rupees a share. I know the company is still a little hesitant to give away the entire uh, sort of working on how they arrived at that price, but it's clearly the highest bid right now. Did you also price into that 58 a premium so that you didn't get into a shootout position? Because the moment you did get into a shootout position, it would have been a little out of control and then, you know, the prices could have escalated far further. I think Menka, as we saw earlier in the, um, uh, you know, when we saw Mr. Anand Mandra speak, right. uh, clearly, you know, from the company perspective, uh, they were keen on this asset. They said that it, there was a lot of complementarity and they were keen to get the asset. And uh, like any athlete would run, I think they ran to uh, win the race rather than, and, and with, without looking at the back in terms of where the next uh, bidder was. So I think they clearly went from their own conviction and where they wanted to be. Sure. And uh, we really didn't know how the others would bid. So in that sense... But uh, now we do. And we know that the uh, other bid that's come in from LNT is at 45 rupees. So, you know, I'm 45 and a little more. So I'm just wondering that 12 rupee premium that you have eventually ended up paying, and clearly we're going by hindsight now because when you did bid, you wouldn't know what the other bidders came in. But, you know, could you justify that 12 rupee premium saying at least we didn't get into a shootout situation? See, we don't know what they are thinking, right? We don't know what l and is thinking. So I think from that perspective, uh, as again, I would like to just repeat what Mr. Mahendra said, that when okay. you want to win the race, you just go with your conviction rather than worry about who's... How far behind? So we're looking at a price of what 2,900 rupees right now, and of that, I think Bharat Doshi of M&M has been very crore crores, yeah. rupees. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. So of that, uh, Bharat Doshi of M&M has very been clear that 700 will come from internal accruals that they have, uh, you know, on the tech M balance sheet, and the remaining about 2,200 crore odd uh, will be debt financing. I'm just wondering, in this entire structure, uh, is there any scope, not in the immediate near term, but let's say over the next three or four months, for you to bring in private equity participation because that is been a buzz that's gone on throughout the day today that you might bring in private equity participation and if you do bring it in then would you prefer to bring it in at the SPV level which means you need to do it over the next three or four days because once the ownership of this uh, SPV is finalized uh, in the document paper you can't change it for three years as per the board's rules or would you prefer to bring it in at the parent level which is at the tech M level in a capital restructuring of sorts? No like Bharat said right now from the near term perspective you know from the time that the winning bidder will have to pay this money by next week. Right. I think it's only the debt which is being envisaged. And right. like he said, the debt is being considered both at the tech M level as well as at the SPV level. I'm saying in look, the medium look a term, week beyond for me, if you can. Yeah, but that's uh, then uh, by then the shareholding would have got, you know, as, as you said. So I don't think uh, there is any near term plan from equity perspective. Okay. Uh, and we, um, I, or let me not say that, but I think I'd like to reword that mm -hmm. right now we haven't focused on that. We have, from our client perspective, they are the highest bidder, and if uh, they get selected as a winning bidder, they have put in place financing, which relies predominantly on but debt. But do you envisage private equity participation coming into this deal over, over the next three term? or four months? Yes. Over medium term, yes. Okay. But how do we define a medium term? You know, whether a week, ten days, uh, two, three months, I don't know. Okay. But uh, at this moment, they have so the resources. So since you clearly up. ruled it out in the near term, and in the near term, you need to lock in the ownership of this SPV, and the rules of the board of Satyam are very clear that you cannot change. There is a three-year lock-in once you sign that agreement. That means if you don't bring in a private equity player at this in the next week or you know six days or seven days till you sign these documents, the only area you can bring them in later is at the parent company level. Have I got this correct? Not necessary. There are okay. other options, and that's what I'm saying, that we haven't focused on that uh, if there is a private equity investor interest in the next stage, how do we capture it, in what form, and at what level? So there's no active mandate right now to start talking to private equity no. players? It is only in the medium term that you will reconsider whether you need to sort of convert some of that debt into equity participation by private equity funds? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the one last sticky question I think that, uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to put to the M&M management was the fact that uh, L&D continues to be a shareholder in Satyam. Uh, you know, it, it has expressed its interest very, very vehemently. It was the second highest bidder, so to speak. And even though its stake will get considerably diluted, uh, maybe all the way down to 8% or even 6%, depending on which way this open offer goes, uh, they will still be a 6% you know, stakeholder. Do you anticipate any trouble on that front? 
Uh, not really, because I think uh, the, the way this process is envisaged, uh, the winning bidder could go up all the way up to 51% or anywhere close to that that they feel comfortable. And at that level, they would have a reasonable control on the company and I do not see any issues. Finally, Falconi, uh, can you give us a sense or help us understand what the timeline is likely to be here onwards? When do we expect the open offer to happen? I know it will take a couple of days for the government approval to yes. come in or the CLB approval to come in for them to go from being the highest bidder to the winning bidder. But then onwards, what is the likely timeline that we can expect? I think the first timeline is that uh, uh, the winning bidder will have to pay in the money by Monday next right. and uh, that's when the preferential allotment will happen and following that there are some procedural steps and then the open offer so it will be quite quick from here. So what within a month can we expect yes, the open of offer? Course, yeah. Within a month you expect the open offer to be done and over with? How long does yeah. the open offer have to stay? I mean uh, in terms of uh, the open offer uh, uh, it won't be done uh, by the end of the month but hmm. uh, within a month it would have commenced. It would have commenced. Yeah. So clearly their ownership situation will be very clear by the middle of May for sure. Yes. How much they own and whether a subsequent dilution of equity or a subsequent tranche of equity to uh, Tech Mahindra is required at all depending on the response from the open offer. I think before going into the open offer they have to um, say what is their intent in terms of what if the open offer is not fully subscribed do they want to go up through additional preferential allotment. Okay. And have they decided on whether they want no, to go up? No, not yet. We so that we're jumping folks. the gun. Yeah, as I said that. we just just, you know, going to think about all that tomorrow. Let me ask you the final question. That being that, what do you anticipate are some of the legal financial challenges that the, this deal might go through? We know the, uh, the transitioning challenges. We know the integration challenges that, that, you know, any business has to go through when they acquire another business. But in being able to close this deal successfully, anything specifically that we can expect over the next month or two? No, I think the government-run board um, and uh, the process was uh, empowered by the government-run board and it was a very well-run process and I do not expect too many uh, legal and financial challenges in the deal closure. All right, Falgani, thanks very much. We'll leave it there. I know you're constrained from sharing too many details. m and is still waiting for final clearance to come in from the company law board before they're able to talk to us in more detail about this transaction. Well,